if I told you that the Roman Catholic Church doesn't really care about truth? What it's really about is submitting to the Pope, kissing the papal feet. After that, you can do whatever you want. A perfect example of this is the Eastern Catholics, who venerate post-schism Orthodox saints, who believe Orthodox theology, who reject the filioque, who do all these Orthodox things, they reject the Catholic dogmas, yet they are considered fully Catholic. That is clear as day a contradiction. Submit to the Pope the keys, even though that's not even what the Church Fathers believed about the papacy. The real rock is Peter's confession of faith. Christ is the rock. This is what the Church Fathers said. It is not the Vatican I papacy. And because of the Alexandria document and the Chady document, we can see that the Catholic Church has admitted that the Vatican I papacy was not present in the early church. It was something that evolved over time with forgeries. And then when there's a great schism in 1054, the Catholic Church is really a political entity, and they want people to su submit to the Pope. So some of those Orthodox, they're not Orthodox anymore because they submit to the Pope, but they still do a lot of the Orthodox things. They venerate our Orthodox saints. Like Gregory Palamas is a clear as day example, a pillar of orthodoxy, but he can be a Roman Catholic saint. The Trad Catholics will say the essence energy distinction is heresy. Yet, Palamas is venerated in Eastern Catholic churches, and also the Cappadocian Fathers taught the essence energy distinction. They will say that hesychasm is Hinduism. Yet, Palamas, it doesn't make any sense. And not only that with the Eastern Catholics, but all the, also the Oriental Catholics, who some of them even venerate Nestorius as a saint. How can that make any sense? It doesn't make any sense. And when you ask Catholics about this, they say, uh, I don't know, because it, it does contradict all their teachings. No salvation outside the church. It contradicts their theology because it shows that they that Catholicism really just cares about submitting to the Pope. And I had a great conversation with David about this, about how the Eastern Catholics refute Rome. Eastern Catholic Catholics refute Rome. Eastern Catholics, they maintained all of the Orthodox um, practices basically like they don't recite the filioque they want it removed I believe and I, I think pope benedict would have agreed with me we eventually need the filioque taken out of the roman creed Ooh. at vatican one the melkite patriarch refused to sign vatican one uh they still venerate gregory palamas and david highlighted this in his video how this really shows that rome isn't they don't care about theological unity or unity on the saints they they just care about submitting to the pope like, yeah that's that's a perfect point i mean at the end of the day when you look at the when you look at communion the concept of communion yeah and the concept of unity in in christianity it must be based on something right so historically and within the orthodox church the, it is based on the sameness of faith the faith has yeah. to be the same the faith has to be the the faith that you've confessed has to be the same that's why the creed is important right it, there can't be multiple creeds there has to be one creed mm -hmm. that is yeah. not changed because if the creed is changed then the substance of the faith is changed even if the change is something even in, in you know meaningless right and, and this was something that was understood particularly after the fifth century yeah so <clears throat> that's a point that we have to we have to bear in mind first and with relation to the eastern catholics and kind of the the point about communion and the unity of faith is that it shows us that if to be a Roman Catholic, you don't have to be united on the basis of faith because you can have a different kind of a faith in Christ and you can still be a Roman Catholic, yes. right? And confessionally, right? I'm not saying just individually, I'm saying confessionally, mm -hmm. and that's a big deal. Yeah. All that matters at the end of the day then is that, well, do you kiss the papal feet? If you kiss the papal feet, then congratulations, you're a Roman Catholic. It doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter if you believe in Christological Nestorianism, which Chaldeans do, the Syro Malabars do. They openly venerate not just Nestorius, but also Theodore of Mopsueste and Theodore of Tarsus, who are two proto Nestorians. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, in their liturgy, they call them the Greek doctors, the Greek fathers. Okay. Yeah. They commemorate them. And so there's, there's that as well. And with, with the so called Orthodox, right? You know, the Eastern Catholics, yeah. uh, they pretty much you know, confess Orthodox theology, a lot of them, right? So mm -hmm. they believe St. Gregory Palamas is a saint. They, uh, they celebrate the Sunday of St. Gregor, Gregory Palamas. So according to the Roman Catholic Church, historically, the man who was actually a heretic who believed in multiple divinities is now a Roman Catholic saint. Yeah. Uh, not in the Latin calendar, okay, but the Eastern Catholics, which are officially recognized, papally recognized, are celebrating him openly as a saint, and not just St. Gregory Palamas, but pretty much in the entirety of the Orthodox tradition of saints, which includes St. Mark of Ephesus and St. Photius even, right? Even these people. And, yeah. uh, 
and you know you know maybe some individual churches might not use that the, the medallion and they celebrate those things but many of the eastern catholic churches in fact do that right so that's besides the point the roman catholic church officially recognizes this and when you read the uh, alexandria document and the other documents like the chieti document the roman catholic church mm -hmm. has put out they openly admit that part of the essential aspect of the church is within the orthodox tradition right mm -hmm. so, they, so they see themselves as trying to uh, collect these aspects of the churchnesses within the roman catholic church and they recognize that the orthodox church has those things yeah so from the perspective of the roman catholic church the eastern catholic catholics are not just some you know foreigners that are just like really not real catholics or anything like that no they are authentically part of the roman catholic tradition just as much as the latin tradition is yeah so you can't really go go that route route either so once i like retro a lot of the eastern catholics and the whole idea the concept of it and the bizcaf forums and what <laughs> the people who actually go to eastern catholic churches say and yeah. what they write and what their priests say what their bishops say what their official websites and their eparchies and their bishops say mm -hmm. i just read all of those things and i realized well they're basically you know larping as orthodox but they kiss the papal feet and the roman catholic church recognizes this and they recognize their saints that's a contradiction right yeah. at, at the end of the day that's a contradiction to you know, historically say that the Orthodox are heretics for not believing in the filioque to then say, okay, you can actually be Roman Catholic and say the creed without the filioque. <laughs> yeah. That's a contradiction. Yeah. And if you read the Council of Florence, what happened in the Council of Florence, the bishops of the Council of Florence, the Roman Catholic bishops taught the Orthodox were heretics mm -hmm. for not believing in the filioque. Now suddenly, and this happened after the Council too, now suddenly, oh, actually you can say the two creeds. Well, that, that, that means there are two faiths. And that means there's no real communion of faith. That means that the Roman Catholic faith is not one. Yeah. And so if the Roman Catholic is not one and it's not Catholic, then it's not holy either. It's certainly not apostolic either. Then it's not the true church. Then it, that de facto makes the Orthodox Church the true church from the Roman Catholic perspective. And I try to tell this to people a lot of times. And I think I made that point clear in the Eastern Catholic video. And I yeah. try to tell this to these people. And they find ways to cope around this and it's very difficult to understand that mindset but that's how i will kind of summarize the the thought process that i had as that as uh -huh. well because nowadays people are there's some people that are like proudly byzantine catholic <laughs> i, I know some yeah. proud to be byzantine catholic wrong. about you're just proof that the roman catholic church is wrong exactly <laughs> and it's so ironic because they're like they're the western polemic is oh the eastern the orthodox are so divided but it's like we have real unity. We have theological unity. We have unity on on the saints. We have unity in liturgy. Versus in the Catholic Church, you have they're they're saying different creeds. They have different saints. They believe different theology. I mean, you have some Western Catholics saying that Gregory Palamas is a Hindu. He's polytheism and all these things. It's like a lot of these the, the Western Catholic Western Catholics. They don't even know that you know Gregory Palamas is a saint. And so when I tell them that, they're like, well. They don't. They don't know what they say. They just said. Now they say, "Oh, it's a mystery." But it's like you know, your entire polemic was that the Orthodox Church is so divided. But we actually have real unity in the Orthodox Church. We maybe there's some superficial geopolitical things going on, but in your church, you don't. You don't even have theological unity. You don't have liturgical unity from the FSSP to the SSPX to the Novus Ordo parishes to the Eastern Catholics, even within the Eastern Catholics, like you're, like you're talking about the uh, Cyril Malabar versus the Melkites. On your video, you bring up the, the Melkite website, which says that they only accept seven councils. And it's funny because when I was Catholic, I tried going to an Eastern Catholic church. And one of my like last draws was calling the Melkite priest and talking to him about these issues. And he's like, he like agreed on all the issues. He's like, yes, the filioque needs to be removed. He, yes, you know, Vatican I is, is a huge accretion. It's like, what, what's the point of being in communion with, with, with the Pope? And he's like, well, it's better to fight in communion. But it's like, like you were saying, they aren't Catholic. They aren't one. You're supposed to have one faith and, and they don't, they don't have that. You don't even have the, the same creed. And the, like it contradicts no salvation outside the church. And the trad Catholics think they're so they're so like base because they're like, oh, uh, no salvation outside the church. But it's like Rome cl clearly teaches that there is salvation outside of the church. Not, not just with the Eastern Catholics. I mean, even in the Latin rite, they have Gregory of Narek. They, yeah. have, uh, they recently canonized the, uh, the Coptic martyrs, right? Yeah. Uh, 
in the Roman Catholic Church. I mean, it's very, very is it well, well. So now they say instead, oh well, the church is you know it's not just limited to the papacy. It's like mystically outside of the of the church as <laughs> yeah. well, right? It's like and there and, they are, and like for example with Gregory of Narek, I've heard a Roman Catholic, for example, say, well, the Armenian Church was unorganized, well, right? And so we can't really say that he was outside of the church um, in, in a real sense. It's like, well, by their logic, a, a real organized church is is one that has the papacy <laughs> by their logic. <laughs> yeah. So any church outside of church is unorganized, which means any church that is unorganized is actually part of the Roman Catholic Church as well. I mean, this is just kind of like nonsensical understanding where like Roman Catholics and they're popular their pop apologists will say this too right they will say oh you know we actually believe you to be roman catholic but you have to be really roman catholic it's, yeah. it's just not it's just utterly nonsensical and it's turning the roman catholic church into this like perennialist like this christian perennialist yeah, initially which then will become real perennialistic one world religion and that's and i see some trad based roman catholics openly admit yes we want to have one world government one world religion right? yeah it's like i understand in a sense i understand it's like yes everyone should be christian everyone should you know be of my religion i i, I in a sense i understand that yeah. but you should want them to be freely united to the church by having the same faith the roman catholic vision is not the sameness of faith it's the sameness of worshiping the authority of the platonic form of the papal chair of Peter, yeah, uh, and that, that's the that's the end of the day, right? That's mm -hmm. that's the that's what matters for the Roman Catholic system at the end of the day, and it, and 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 when when you kind of debate them on this, like they will talk about how like oh look at this early church father who says, you know, this about the Sea of Peter and this this about the Roman yeah. Sea and the Apostolic Sea and all of these quotes, and, and you just kind of have to ask them, well, do you think they were thinking about this? Like the Roman Catholic Church as it is today, right now, with yeah. kind of like these kinds of authorities, or are you just reading into what they're really saying? Yeah. Right, and it's, at the end of the day, it's just them reading into what um, the what they what they believe the Church Fathers are saying is is it's the main issue at hand here as well. Papal claims, like they say this about other patriarchs, like the Patriarch of Antioch, they use this grandiose language at certain times because they're basically like trying to get a certain theological thing resolved and they'll appeal to different patriarchs. And, and you know, they will appear to the Patriarch of Rome, like other patriarchs, like the Patriarch of Rome, it was doubly apostolic, you know, Peter and Paul died there. It had a high place of honor, but that doesn't, again, you're right. They're totally reading into like Vatican I, papal supremacy, all this stuff that didn't exist, but in those recent admissions uh, by the Catholic Church in the Alexandria and Shady documents, it admits that it wasn't that way. That it was so. Was the papacy something that evolved over time, or was it the Vatican I papacy from the very beginning? I never get a consistent answer on uh, Gregory of Narek as a saint. He died 600 years after the Armenians rejected Chalcedon. So that, that's that's such a long time. And now he could be a doctor of the church. You can be a doctor of the church when you were never in, in the communion with the papacy. That makes no sense. The saint that I was talking about is Saint Sergius of Radonezh. He is canonized by the Roman Catholic Church in the Latin rites. Wow. So he's, he's within the calendar as well. Saint Sergius of Radonezh. Yeah. He was canonized in, uh, in, in the Orthodox Church in 1449. Yeah. So just think about that. So he lived years after the schism. Yeah. And then another point is that the way that the Catholic Church is going, it's like before the Pope was the supreme teacher of all Christians and he alone had the key. But now, you know, like you're talking about with perennialism and this ecumenism and just like interface stuff. And now with like the Abrahamic faith center, they are trying to create this like one world religion. It's like you can believe whatever, you know, just submit to the Pope, just be under the influence of the Pope. I mean, they even have... They've have, they have a Mayan rite of the mass. And that that was surprise like I thought that was just like some polemic. No, you can look this up. They have a Mayan rite of the mass and it's com completely pagan, but I guess, I guess it's okay as long as you submit to uh the, the keys. I think I think, I think yeah. a lot of Roman Catholics they don't really live in reality about these things. They they live in this isolated bubble and this platonic form where they think that they still live in the 15th century, 16th century, or 14th century, like or the greatest periods of the Roman Catholic Church, where there were no <laughs> problems, which still had a lot of problems, but they, they think that they live in this golden age in like yeah. made up in their mind. And it's just like, oh, you know, you know, once Francis goes away, we'll get a base pope and you know he'll fix everything, even though all the cardinals he elected are not gonna allow that, right? But 
uh, you know, they don't see what Roman Catholicism actually is in reality. And the way you yeah. see that is in the liturgy, in the mass, yes. right, in the prayers, in the practical prayers, and how it is done. So one of the arguments they'll say again, with like no unity, like you don't, you don't, you don't have any proper unity, or you don't have any proper authority to handle things. If that was true, then you know the Orthodox Christianity will be rife with liturgical abuses. Now, now obviously liturgical abuses do happen in the Orthodox Church at times, but compared to the Roman Catholic Church, we barely have any liturgical abuses, and the liturgical abuses that we do have pale in comparison to the liturgical abuses that you see in the roman catholic church even if you like you know try to compare per capita or something like that still the roman catholic church has <laughs> yeah. a lot more liturgical abuse going on and that goes to show you that uh what what good does the authority do for you if you still can't maintain the essential core aspect of the faith mm -hmm. which is the service itself yeah if you can't have the proper service then what's what good is the authority for you moreover we do have authority we just have authority over various different churches that are united in the sameness of faith and you know whenever there's an issue that it has to be handled by various different other orthodox patriarchs there is a pan-orthodox synod or what was called previously an ecumenical synod and we had many of these and this is a popular polemic right oh you can't make any you, you can't do any ecumenical councils right it's like yeah. um we have had dogmatic ecumenical pan-orthodox councils after the schism we had many of them we had mm. um we had them with the Pesachas synods. We had yeah. this with the Council of Jerusalem. We have many examples of Orthodox synods, synods that you have to universally accept as an Orthodox Christian. So that's not something, that's not a problem that we have. So it's a popular meme argument, but it's not a real <laughs> argument. And yeah. that's the main thing here. That was one of the biggest wake up calls for me is like, how can this church that's supposed to be guided by the Holy Spirit, how can they mess up in something as fundamental as the liturgy? Because, you know, when I was Catholic, I was like, I went to a Noah's Ordo parish, but when I found out about the TLM, like the traditional Latin Mass, I'm like, it's actually reverent. I'm like, I couldn't make, I'm like, I'm never going back to the Noah's Ordo because it's literally just a Protestant Mass. How could you mess up on something on how we worship God, especially in the Old Testament? It's so. Uh, you know, it's so like we need to worship God in a certain way. How can we mess up something that fundamental? And it's like, despite, you know, you in the Orthodox world, under communism, under Muslim rule, the Orthodox have been, main, they haven't had a heretical uh, ecumenical council. They don't have modernist saints. They don't have a modernist liturgy. Like despite all the oppression, they, they've maintained the faith. And in the Catholic church, they've had material prosperity. And, but where is all the bad things happening from? It's literally coming from the Pope. It's it, like the, the Pope is the cause of these problems. And it's like if Orthodox have, like we don't teach any heresy in councils. Uh, we don't, we have the liturgy. We still make amazing saints. Like you can read our modern saints and they're modern day church fathers. I mean, we ha they, the, the Catholics even say we have Christ in the Eucharist. So what exactly is the point of being Catholic? Like, I just, it, I have to submit to a pope who's also a heretic. Like, it's just a mental gymnastic. And I think that's why it just drives a lot of people. Like, if you're really trying to take your Catholic faith seriously, it just, it doesn't make any sense. You just got to become Orthodox. Father Hughes has a good title for a video where yeah. he's like, we have Christ, but we need the Pope. Yeah. I mean, isn't it supposed to be the other exactly. way around? If like, what's what we're supposed to need, right? Yeah, exactly.